part 14 of the Deep Space Nine space station build-up. Work is uh, continuing on the Mini Me Define. I've got the decals down now on the ship. Um, I have had an issue with the decals on the top. Uh, it's not Jerry's fault at uh, HDA Model Works, it's actually my fault. Uh, I should have realized that uh, all of these decals did need to be uh, cut out separately from the sheet. Um, however, I didn't do that. I just uh, put the whole thing in some water and then put it on and realised a bit too late really that uh, none of it was matching up. Um, the only ones I managed to really rescue partially was the side ones and that was about it before it was uh, too, uh, before the decals had set too hard. What I should have really done is I should have just gone in and cut out all of the separate decals around the the, uh, the edges and then placed them on as individual decals. But hey ho, you learn by your mistakes. Um, it doesn't look too bad, I mean you can tell by the front there that it's looking a little bit off. Um, you know, and some of these panels around here are a little bit off and at the back as well. The top one looks pretty much well okay. Um, the side ones, apart from this one here, which is a bit too far forward, uh, it's not looking too bad. I mean, you know, for a first attempt at these ones, it's not too bad. Um, something I just need to remember in the future. Uh, on the bottom side of the ship, um, if we can just turn this around. Bear with me a second whilst I just struggle with the... Uh, the stand. There you go. If we just turn that around a little bit and get that back in camera shot, there you go. So on the bottom of this, uh, I did follow uh, the advice of cutting the decals out. I basically cut these out into, um, I think it was 14 sections in the end. But I think I really could have actually gone a bit further than that. I should have really cut all of these ones out individually as well. Um, but again, you know, you learn by your mistakes. It, it's not a problem. It looks okay. It doesn't look too bad. Um, if I take this um, off of the, uh, the stand, actually, for a second, uh, you'll be able to see uh, down the sides there, if the camera's going to focus for me, that's, uh, that's, didn't realize I had to zoom in there. So if you look on the sides there, we've got some windows. And what I will do once that's been uh, clear lacquered, I'll just go back in there with a little drill bit and um, just drill those out. And then again with the, I'm not sure whether you can see them, the little dots there, which should be the navigation lights, I'll sort those out too. Now I have actually noticed that the uh, the dots on these are actually uh, on the wrong side. It should be uh, green on the starboard side and red on the uh, port side, but unfortunately they're not showing that. But that's not a problem because I'm just going to go in with the drill bit anyway and uh, drill those out. Um, so they'll be all right once I've done that. So that's what the uh, the model's looking like itself at the moment. So I just need to go back in and click at that and then I can just uh, finalize the last few bits uh, and that will be that so as soon as I've made the progress on that I will come back to you for another quick update uh, I've got all the work done to the mini me define that I'm gonna get done uh, there has been a few issues with this kit it's uh, it has been fighting me all the way actually to be fair um, and I've now found that uh, I've got uh, a light leak now that's uh, going across there, which wasn't there before, so I don't know how that's happened. Um, so I'm just going to need to go in and uh, quickly touch that up. Uh, but as you can see, we've got the anti-collision lights in. They will flash um, once the circuit board's attached. We've also got the 
uh, navigation beacons in on each side. Um, you can't really see those too well, unfortunately. Well, the, the back one you can, but the front one you can't really see that well, unfortunately. But all of the other lights uh, are in and working. Um, I guess, really, to be quite honest, that's going to be uh, about as good as it's going to get for 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 this model. I think maybe I might have tried to cram too much in. I don't know. Um, but it was worth a shot anyway. You know, you don't know about these things until you try them, so it's worth a shot. Um, I've got a couple of other things to show you as well, so what I'll do is I'll get the camera um, set back up again and get this uh, out of the way and I'll show you the uh, the other couple of bits. Okay, so these are from uh, the Paragraphics uh, Photo Edge set. These are just basically the uh, insignia uh, for uh, the Bajoran, Cardassian and Federation. Uh, so what I've done to these is I've basically uh, put a primer on these and then I've put the antique bronze over the top of it and then uh, put a matte clear coat on the top of these. Now the thing is with these, um, there's a happy little accident that I've had um, in the fact that I used the Tamiya um, surface primer rather than the etched primer. And what that did is it actually pulled the paint away uh, in places from around the uh, the edges. Um, when I sprayed the uh, antique bronze over the top of that, it uh, sorry antique brass, it actually gave it the effect that you've got the edges that are slightly worn, where I suppose you know maybe they've been cleaned or whatever. But it actually um, adds to the effect of it, and I'm not sure. Yeah, you can just see there uh, on the edges where you've got the uh, the brass coming through uh, from the photo etch. So the effect on that is actually looking quite good. Um, so that was a, a happy little accident that I had. These uh, will eventually go on the stand uh, when that arrives. Um, and then they should, hopefully, well I'm hoping uh, that they should contrast quite nicely uh, with the uh, gloss black on the stand. The other two things I need to put on the stand as well, um, that have also come from uh, Jerry at HDA uh, Model Works, are the little plaques that I've had built. This is a standard one that he's got. Uh, and that looks really good, so that's going to go on the stand. And then the other one that we've got is one that uh, he's uh, designed for me from a picture that I saw uh, online. And uh, basically it's got at the top there the Defiant Development Program at the uh, Antares uh, Fleet Yard, where the, uh, the Defiant was... Uh, uh, conceived and then you've got just on underneath the USS Defiant and then assimilate this as we all know the uh, the Defiant was used for uh, or was purely designed to fight the Borg so that looks quite good too so um, they're gonna sit um, either side so on the stand hopefully it should be a case of you've got those uh, like that that'll be in the middle like so, and then a power button each side. So we've got one for the uh, one for the space station, and then one for the Defiant. And then, if we can uh, get this in camera shot, we have this one on that side, and then that one on that side, like so. So hopefully that should look pretty good. So I'm quite happy with that. So I just need to uh, wait for the stand to come in, uh, and as soon as that comes in, I'll uh, come back to you with another update. Welcome back to the build that uh, time forgot. Uh, as you're uh, most probably aware, um, we didn't quite get this uh, mounted on its base, mainly because we didn't have the base for it. However, uh, we now have the base, which is absolutely fantastic. So what I can start doing now is getting this uh, all sorted out ready for its base uh, I think it's been, it must have been about uh, crikey about uh, 8 maybe 9 weeks ago that uh, I managed to get the model itself finished 
um, and the little uh, the little mini me defined and I've just been waiting on the stand to come in um, so it's actually now uh, on the stand which is uh, which is great so I'll just pan down so you can uh, see the base the poles at the moment are a little bit too high up um, but as you can see uh, most probably hopefully there's a little red mark on each one of the poles um, so that's where it's going to get chopped down to so you're only going to have that much pole um, sticking up so there I, I just cut them roughly to shape before uh, before I done anything else let's just, just zoom back out again so there you go so that's the um, the actual base itself we've got the two switches in the front there um, we've got one for the uh, station itself and then we've also got one for the little mini me defined which is great um, and then we've got these uh, if you can remember these little things here um, that will be going on either side of the model um, sort of about there-ish and then we've got the Starfleet insignia that's going to go in the middle um, unfortunately there's not enough room really to put, unless I put these right to the outer edges there's not really enough room to get the other insignia in um, or I might need to put those right in um, to put the uh, the other insignias on I'm not sure just yet but um, I'll just double check and, and see what we can do with it from there um, but yeah I just need to get this sanded down a little bit more now um, it just needs uh, sort of 1200 grit over the top of it just to help uh, smooth some of the rougher bits down before I start spraying it now this is actually made of um, MDF and you can most probably see there that you've got the three different layers um, the darker band there being where the glue's gone in now I have tested it on uh, another model uh, no, another stand that did actually go a little bit wrong um, but you can see there you can't you, we've got the edges there um, but you can't really see them on this side so that's good news um, this went a bit wrong because it broke at the back end this one was meant to be for the Cardassian Galore so we're just going to need to uh, make another one for that one now one of the things uh, that I have been experimenting with on this bit as well this why I just thought I'd bring this back with me as well uh, just to experiment on a little bit is <clears throat> what would be the best sort of material to use for this or the, the best product to use for this um, paint wise really you know would I need to put um, a sort of PVA glue down on the surface first or would I be able to spray straight onto it well the answer to that one is you can actually do it both ways uh, this has had PVA um, stuck on it on this side and then it's just had primer put on uh, but you can still see some of the markings there where I haven't actually sanded it down but it, as I say it was just a test bed and then on this side uh, that's a lot smoother um, all I did with that one was I just sprayed it straight onto the surface again this hadn't been sanded as I say I'm just using it, I was just using it as a test bed but all I did was I just put three layers of uh, primer on the surface of that and it stuck really well to the MDF and then I sanded that down uh, or just gave it a light sanding down with, 100, uh, with 1200 grit and then I just put three layers of uh, black uh, automotive paint on there, acrylic automotive paint let that dry then just gave that a light buffing down and then once I done that I just put um, just one layer of uh, acrylic uh, gloss varnish over the surface um, and that's quite shiny as it is with just one layer but obviously you know I want this to be as shiny as possible so I would imagine that's going to be built up with most probably three or four diff uh, you know three or four layers of uh, gloss varnish just to really help that shine come through um, but uh, that is you can see there you know you've got some good um, you've got some good light coming off of that 
So all I need to do really is basically do the same to this. As I say, I'll just sand this down because you can still feel uh, a, a few blemishes in the surface there. Um, so I just sand that down and then carry on. So as soon as I've got some more work done to this base, uh, I will come back to you. Okay, so I've been continuing the uh, the work on the base. Um, I've sanded this down now completely with uh, 1200 grit sandpaper. There was a little imperfection, as you most probably see there, that little white spot. Um, there was a little imperfection there uh, in the MDF. So I've gone over that with uh, the good old uh, perfect plastic putty just to fill that in and then just sanded that absolutely smooth and you can't even f feel anything there anymore which is great um, and I've also sanded all the edges down as well to get them as smooth as possible that will actually help the uh, the primer well not only really adhere to the surface but it will also um, sort of help save a lot of uh, sanding down with the primer as well so I'm going to, uh, I think I've decided that I'm going to put six layers of primer on this thing. So and I'm going to do that in uh, two, two stages. So I'll put the first three layers down and then I'll give that a good sand down with uh, 120 grit, just to, uh, sorry, uh, 1200 grit, just to make sure that that's really, really smooth. And then I'll go back over it again, if needs be, um, with another sort of two or three coats of uh, primer again and then sand that down and then once I've done that I'll most probably put sort of, uh, two coats of uh, black paint on there then just give that a gentle sanding down with the 1200 and then another two coats of black and then give that another gentle sanding down then put another coat of black on there because I do want this to be as smooth as I possibly can get it and hopefully by doing that that should work and then I'll be able to get sort of four or five layers of uh, clear lacquer on the top of this and uh, hopefully that should uh, bring out a really really nice um, a really sort of nice rich deep shine to it um, I'm still debating because I'll be using car paints on this so it depends on how um, the lacquer comes out I might actually um, get the good old car wax out after that and uh, give it a really really good buff with the car wax but I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to take it that far it just depends really on how glossy the surface of this comes out but at the moment this is just so smooth it's unbelievable so that's about it for the moment guys as soon as I got some uh, more work done to this stand I will come back to you well unfortunately um, you're not going to get to see the uh, stand being built I know you saw what, it's, uh, what it looked like to begin with um, I just got a bit carried away with it if I'm to be honest and um, sort of got it finished <laughs> um, the stand itself is done in gloss black apart from the top the top has been done in a matte varnish uh, the reason why I chose to do it in a matte varnish was because I didn't want the anti-collision lights from the station and all the lights from the uh, Mini-Me Defiant um, sort of being reflected back up off the surface so I just done it in the matte colour so it's actually uh, looking quite good I'll show you it in a minute actually I'll get the lights turned down and we can uh, take a look at it but for me I guess the highlights of this build um, were to actually get those little runabouts lit up I mean they're only uh, a, a centimetre long which is kind of really small uh, and to be able to get those lit up was was for me at least quite an achievement so I'm, I'm really happy with that um, I think the lighting as well on this model uh, was was a good achievement for me uh, so without further ado I'm gonna get my mu ugly mug off the camera because uh, it's most probably breaking your PCs by now uh, and we get the star of the uh, the star of the show in in shot for you okay so this is what the base is looking like as you can see we've got all the sides there nice and shiny and then the top has just been done in a nice matte, uh, a nice matte lacquer um, that's actually giving it a bit of a grey hue to it really but you know that's not too much of a problem I think I, I might have actually gone a bit overboard with the uh, the matte lacquer there but it's not a problem really to be fair you know it still looks good 
So we've got the um, the two plaques on there that Jerry made me from HDA Model Works, and then we've also got the three uh, little insignias that come with a photo etch kit. So we've got the Cardassian on the left, Federation in the middle, and then Bajoran on the right. And then as you can see, we've got the little mini me Define in the background there. And then if I can just uh, pan up a little bit for you, you'll be able to see the support legs, or sorry, the um, pylons, should I say, of the model. And then if we continue upwards, you'll see the two little uh, mini me runabouts that are on there. And then you can see the little blinking lights as well. And then if we go up, we've also got the upper pylons there as well so that's what the model's starting to, oh sorry, that's what the model does look like now so if I just get the lights turned out as you can see we've got one uh, SMD there that's not working now unfortunately um, I can't go in and repair that, the reason uh, being on that one is that the actual head of the SMD has uh, been ripped off somehow. I'm not sure how that's happened, but that has happened. Um, and you can see the the little um, uh, the warning lights on the uh, weapon cells there blinking away quite nicely. And then if we come back down to the little Defiant, you'll be able to see there that we've got the little anti-collision lights coming in. And you can also see the glow uh, coming off of the Defiant as well for one of the warning beacons off the bottom of the um, off the bottom of the pylon there now this one here, this pylon here unfortunately I think I must have resisted this too much because you can't see the glow coming off of that but you can on this one at the back just barely see uh, a shine coming off the, the surface there and that's the reason why I wanted to do that in matte black was because it would stop any light bouncing back up. So if we can just uh, move the position of the camera around a little bit. And then if we just uh, come in a little bit, you'll be able to hopefully see there the little, um, you can see the power core just coming through the middle there and then you'll see one of the little runabouts there and then if I can just focus in on the other one this one looks as though it's uh, in flight so you go that's what that one looks like and that, that, that does look quite cool there's a little light leak underneath that unfortunately there's not really a lot I can do about that um, I've tried my best on this kit to get rid of all the light leaks but unfortunately it's just not working um, it is proven to be a, a, a pain to actually try and get all the light leaks sorted out on this but I guess that's one of the, uh, the downfalls of having a, um, a clear kit so let's just see if we can uh, take you guys up a bit on the stand and then we can hopefully see the, uh, the blinky lights at the top there you go, you can see them coming into view there I just need to um, put a little bit more um, crystal clear at the top of those just to help bring those out a little bit more but I didn't want to go too mad uh, with those I was trying to actually get them in uh, in scope or in scale really with the actual model itself if we can just uh, zoom or oh, sorry pan down just a little bit So that's what she's uh, that's what she's looking like. And it's taken a bit of time to build this kit, but I am quite happy uh, with the way that this has turned out. So what I'll do is I'm just going to take you off the stand so we can get a closer look at the uh, the bottom of the ship. So if you just bear with me a second. Unfortunately, we are going to go into uh, vomit comet mode here because I think the uh, the underside of the ship is. Uh, or the station is quite cool. We just have to get ourselves into some really, really awkward angles to uh, to view this. But that's uh, what. Well, sorry, that was my finger that got in the way there. 
but that's what she's looking like underneath and you can see we've got the uh, the weapon sails there with the little blinky lights on there I think that's actually come out a treat and then we've got the lights underneath the pylons there too and then if we go down to the little mini me define Uh, that's actually sitting on the stand rather than uh, sort of being uh, held up in the air. I just decided to have it that way to make it look as though it's flying underneath the pylon. So that's about it for this uh, for this build, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the series on this one. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed making this one. It has uh, taught me uh, a great deal. Let's just uh, go in and take a closer look at that little runabout. And then let's uh, go out and have a, a little look at the other one. If we can find it, there she is. And you see the little red uh, Passat scoops at the front there, which is kind of cool. So that's about it guys, uh, as I say I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this build series as much as I've uh, enjoyed building it. Uh, I'll now go back and uh, continue working on the runabout and the diorama for that and uh, I'll post an update on that uh, as soon as I've got one. Until then, thanks for watching guys and please do take care.